Hi, about eight months ago, I connected with a guy named John who bought my favorite car from me 40 years ago, which was a 79 Z28. Uh, John's owned it ever since, uh, rarely drove it, did some autocross racing with it, and then stored it about 30 years ago. Uh, during our reconnection in December, uh, he invited me to come out sometime in the summer to take a look at it, and that took place yesterday. So I literally pulled back the cover on this car. I'm going to call it a barn find because it has been sitting and it was very dusty. But underneath that cover and underneath that dust was the car I remembered. Now, I have to admit, I thought it was going to be way more emotional for me than it was. And I'm glad it wasn't. I had to do it. I had to see it because I've been thinking about that car ever since that day I sold it. But it's good to have a little bit of closure. Uh, John was gracious enough to put up with me for about an hour and a half yesterday as I took a bunch of pictures, a video which is going to follow this intro, and he and I talk about it uh, behind the camera as we looked at this car as it's still tucked in the garage. So take a look at the video, uh, take a look at the articles that I'm linking below for the full story, and enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. So 40 years later... I'm reacquainted with this car that I sold to another tailor, no yeah. relation. It stayed John in the family Tim. name. Huh? It stayed in the family name. I hope you got a deal on the uh, sales tax. <laughs> yeah, no. No? Okay. So almost, almost to the day, 40 years, sold this Z28 to John. It's a 1979. Uh, it had 22,000 miles on it when I sold it to John. We just checked. It has 26,000 miles on it. Yep. Uh, it's been in storage how long, John? I built the barn in 1992, so it made its way down to the barn in 92, but in 1990 was the end of driving it. Um, so it stayed in my garage, and then once the barn was built, uh, the car came down here. And you said that it was in a bubble at one point. We had a bubble for it, and it had two like computer, four-inch computer fans in the back of it to, to have a, uh, to keep it blown up. Um, but after years, that deteriorated. I think I had it on jack stands at that time, and now it's... Uh, Sitting a little crooked so I can get my fishing boat in here in the winter time, but uh, it's uh, it's sat in that spot for over 20 years wow. without moving. So anyone who read the article on Vehicle Nanny uh, that I wrote right after I talked to John in December, which was about eight months ago, mm -hmm. uh, which he so graciously took my call because who wants to listen to the guy from 40 years ago talk about his car? But John was great about it, so I learned all about what was going on. and. And I asked if I could come out and see it, and he's like, absolutely, but there's a boat in the way. So clearly the boat was probably here, yep. I'm assuming. Yep. You teased me with a picture of the boat in the garage, and I couldn't. I'm like looking buried. for a reflection to see if I could see it. Yeah, oh, it, was, it's, it was buried. It had lots of stuff and dust. Yeah, so you know what's cool about it is pretty much you have not done much to it since since. I turned it over to you. you know, I put on these these side vents from a 1980 Z28 and the air induction hood, which is is and was so cool. And I'm thrilled I'm actually getting some pictures of the car that I didn't take when I owned it, which is neat. Um, even the side stripes, which were a 79 side stripe, I kept on. I did not like the 80 stripes, and that's why I didn't change them out. John kept the, the steel wheels, the Z28 wheels, which to me... One of the best features of the car. I know you've done some su suspension work because you autocrossed at one time. And yep. ironically, you know, here's the front rear sway bars and the catalytic converter. And the spare tire jack. And the spare tire jack. Yep, and the spare tire's over in the corner there. Behind, underneath its cover. Here's the original cover for the spare tire. And here's the spare tire. I moved the it space out of the, I had it, Yeah, the space saver. Fun. So I took all that out of the car when I would autocross it and just left it out. And so pretty much the only thing you've done to the interior was you put a roll bar in, probably because of the autocrossing, right? Yep. Yep, and I uh, I still have the seat belts, but I pulled the factory belts out and put some harnesses in there. Yeah, so it's an original four-speed car. Um, the Z28 steering wheel had that, it was a simulated string wrap on it, yeah, which came it was out. Yeah, rubber, right? It's, yeah, it, it's still, yep. it was the same material as the steering wheel. Yep. Um, came out in 78, 79, 80, 81. And I just remember that was so rough on the hands. 
I yeah. know, my hands always be right because eyes always gripping for dear life. <laughs> There's that four speed. I'm sure you appreciate the fact that when I ordered the car, it had these uh, the sport bucket seats, so it did recline one notch. It did. Yep. Which was unusual in that day. It had yeah, it had a like a cam knob where right. it would go back one more. One notch. Yep. So it made it much more enjoyable to uh, work out. Um, this is a sunroof that I had installed, and it is very solid. So my buddy Gil Wong, who mm -hmm. uh, asked me. Check it out and make sure the seals are still good. Oh. Gil, guess what? It seals really well. <laughs> Does he have replacements if I need them? No. No. Because okay. he, he's long gone from the from that scene. Uh. But he has great memory and I do not. So this was just what a great, great opportunity to come out here and, and see the car again. Watch this door. Solid. Solid. Oh man. Yeah, you could show the uh, the wheel well. Yeah. What we discovered inside the wheel well there with the did thunder I, motor. I had that stick light. I don't know if it's... Oh, yeah, it's in that lid. So, John had asked me if we had this rust proof, and I do remember that the dealer at the time rust proofed all these cars. And John and I were looking at this. It's like, oh, what's peeling? Well, this is the actual rust proofing that was applied to the plastic liner. <laughs> But underneath this ratty old rust proofing is brand new. That's a metal liner. Metal liner. That's a metal Excuse liner. me, metal liner. Yeah. And it's brand new. It's like brand plate. new underneath there. Yeah. This car has no rust, as we discovered. Um, <laughs> I just noticed something. It does, though, have. There was a little door ding along here, which is why I put these body side moldings on. Yep. Because nobody respected these cars, they would slam their doors into it back in the day. But other than that, I'm just so impressed that the condition of the car, yes, it's, you know, it's got the storage dust on it. This is a great barn find that would be <laughs> phenomenal to get going again, which you plan on doing when you retire. Yep. John's just a couple years younger than me. Yeah, ready for retirement and it'll be a good winter project to hang out in the barn all winter and get her done. So I did off camera make the offer to John to come out and provide some labor and we'll see if he uh, takes me up on it. It would be a labor of love for certain, but I also respect the fact that you may want to go at your own speed and your own way, but there's just so many memories wrapped up in this car, which I wrote about before, so I won't go into it now. So... All right, well, that's all I'm going to do on video because John needs to get back to his life. <laughs> so, and I'll give some narration when I finally edit this thing and put it out there, and then you'll be able yeah. to read it, John. So Sounds good. Read it and see it. So, Sounds great. Thanks.